And today we're talking about the three things that could really mess up your gut and are really dangerous to your gut. One of the most common things people go to their doctors for, one of the most common things that we see here are stomach issues. And maybe you are one of those people who have stomach issues and you've had the endoscopy, you've had the colonoscopy, and everyone tells you that you're fine, but you're still feeling miserable and you're walking around and you know something's wrong. You feel the pain, the bloating, whatever it is you're experiencing. And here's the thing. It's not just about fixing the belly. I know that the title of this is the three dangerous things for your gut, but the reason they're dangerous is because what your gut is in charge of everything. Figuring out what's going on with your belly is equal to figuring out what's going on with the whole system. So if you've been paying attention to any of my lives, any of my podcasts, any of my videos, you know by now that it all begins in the belly. So we have to figure out what these three things are, what's causing danger to our belly, because that is a danger to our system. Before we begin, I always like to let you know how to reach me and my team. And of course, I already forgot to put up the title, which is three dangers to your gut. So if you're watching us on Facebook, drop the word live, let us know that you're here because it makes us feel awesome to know that we're not talking to a vacuum. And if you're watching us on replay, let us know that you're watching us on play. Type the word change on any platform and my team will reach out to you and we will send you the show notes because sometimes it's nice to see things written out. I know I prefer it to just um, only listening. I like to see the written word. If you're on YouTube, the new method by Dr. E, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're listening to us on podcast, you are not missing anything. Today I'm wearing my black new method sweatshirt and of course the stethoscope that my wife bought me and it's red. That's all you're missing on the podcast. The rest is just my voice. And of course, you're missing my amazing hair. No matter what platform you're on, don't forget to follow us on Instagram because we're funny and it's a great way to private message us. And wherever you are, share this with the people that you love on whatever platform that they're going to hear it and let them become the game changers in their life. And if you don't know by now, my name is Afrat Lamandre. Everyone calls me E or Dr. E, whatever you're in the mood for. And I invented the new method where we empower patients to realize that their symptoms are not in their head. So wherever platform you're on, let me bring this microphone down, whatever platform you're on, just join the conversation and let us know that you're here. Ask your questions. We are going to answer them. Okay. So what are the three dangerous things to your gut? I'm not going to um, keep you in suspense. I'm going to tell you what they are because then we're going to talk about it. You know, I could just wait till the end, but I'm not going to do that. Before we jump into those three things, I always have to say this. If you are suffering in your belly or anywhere else, before you jump in to just self-diagnosing, you must always, always, always be evaluated by conventional medicine. Okay. No matter what, do not skip this piece. Go to your GI, go to your PCP. And if you have the parts, go to your GYN. So no matter what, get evaluated first. And then when they tell you everything is fine, you hop in here and we'll help you figure that piece out. So the three things as promised are dysbiosis, toxins, and stress. And I'm going to explain each one. Dysbiosis. If you've watched any of my lives or listened to any of my, my podcasts, you would know that dysbiosis, everything is in our, we have a microbiome. The microbiome basically means that inside our belly is a whole world full of bacteria. In fact, there's more of them than there is of us, which is kind of freaky. And this microbiome has to have a balance of good bacteria and bad bacteria. And when everything is balanced, everything is wonderful and your system is going to feel great. But when it's not balanced, that's caused, that's called dysbiosis. And dysbiosis is the biggest offender to your gut. If the bacteria in your gut are not happy, <clears throat> if you have dysbiosis, your gut is in danger, and more importantly, your whole system is in danger. If you've looked around, you could see that just about everyone has belly issues. Have you noticed that? Like you have belly issues, your neighbors have belly issues. It's such a common complaint. 
Why is that? Why is it that everywhere we turn, we're seeing bloating, gas, IBS, IBD? Why is that? It's because everyone's microbiome is messed up. Why is it messed up? Well, there's a few reasons of why they're messed up. The first is our over-sanitized world. We don't have a relationship with the bacteria in the earth. And if you grew up on a farm or in a developing country, you're less likely to have an autoimmune disease. I'm not saying there aren't other issues in those environments, but you're less likely to have an autoimmune issue or allergies or any inflammation because your gut and the bacteria in the world have a really nice healthy relationship. But in our industrialized society, we sanitize everything. And so what happens is our microbiome gets over sanitized because we're not introduced to the bacteria that we need, which means the smallest thing is gonna set it off, right? So if you notice, if you travel, some people who travel to developing countries, they get sick really quick, but the people around them are not sick because their microbiome is so overly sanitized that the smallest thing triggers them. And remember, every time I talk about your gut, I'm talking about your skin, your joints, I'm talking about everything because it all affects it. So we have this over sanitized world. What's the other big thing that affects our microbiome? Antibiotics. You know I'm not against antibiotics when it's appropriate, but we use massive amounts in this country and we feed our animals that we eat massive amounts. So we are constantly being assaulted with antibiotics. And that's a direct hit to the microbiome, to the bacteria in your gut, because it doesn't just go out. The antibiotics don't go and just get that one bad bacteria. It eradicates the entire colonies all around. So it really messes up the balance in the microbiome. So if there's one thing you can get from this is only take antibiotics when you need it. Don't go on day one of a cold and say, can you just write me antibiotics? I just want to nip it in the bud. No, you're not getting it. Not from me anyway. Why? Because I love you. Okay. So antibiotics is a big issue. And when people give you antibiotics, there's no conversation about the microbiome. Your doc doesn't say, hey, after you, I know you really need this, but after you need this, come back to me and let's heal your microbiome. No, they say, see you, here's a seven day course. And then your microbiome is left to fend for itself. And if you get sick again, you're gonna get another hit of antibiotics. So it is crucial that we recognize that antibiotics affects the microbiome. And if we need to take it, then we have a conversation of how to fix it. Another well-known drug that's used a lot in this country is antacids, your Nexium, your Prilosec, your Prevacid, all these things that are taken for people who have reflux. You can buy it over the counter. So maybe you have reflux and you take the medicine and you feel great, right? You've reduced the acid. Everything is wonderful. What's the problem? The problem is when you block the acid, you change the pH inside your belly. And now the bacteria that needs to live in a certain pH they can't survive there. So the good ones can't survive. The bad ones get to overgrow. So that change in pH may make you feel better because you don't have the reflux, but it's causing complete dysbiosis. It's messing up everything, everything inside your microbiome and can cause irritable bowel syndrome. So yeah, you got rid of your reflux, but now you have irritable bowel syndrome. Which one do you want? The answer, neither one. We're going to have to fix it. NSAIDs, NSAIDs your aspirins, your motions, your aleves, they destroy the gut also, they irritate the gut. And for those of you on birth control, that can also really mess with the microbiome. So we live in a sanitized world that's messing up our microbiome. And then we're taking all these gut busting medications that are further ruining it. But who cares? Like, so what's the problem? I feel better. I don't have a headache. I took my aleve and my reflux is gone. Who cares, E? Why are you bothering us? Because it creates dysbiosis. And when you have dysbiosis, it's going to cause chronic disease. Almost all chronic diseases start in the microbiome. Heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity, autoimmune disease, allergies, dementia, Parkinson's, autism, pretty much any chronic disease you can think of has a connection to the microbiome. So when I'm talking about your belly, I'm talking about chronic illness. And you know that in functional medicine, we don't just look at the disease, we look at the root cause. And in many cases, that root cause is the microbiome. 
and we have to make sure it's balanced. We do a survey of the land, a population survey. Hey, how much parasites do you have in there? How much yeast do you have in there? How much good bacteria do you have in there? How much bad bacteria? And we have to make sure everything is lined up. And if it's not lined up, we have to fix it because it's probably the cause of your issues. And we want to make sure that the body doesn't not just have enough of everything, but producing the right things. Are your bacteria producing something called short chain fatty acids, which are super important? And are they producing certain things that can cause diseases, right? So we really want to stay on top of what's happening in the microbiome. The bottom line is dysbiosis can, is the cause of all chronic issues. Now, if you want to know what tests you can do, how do I know if my microbiome is fine? First of all, how do you feel? If you don't feel well, your microbiome is probably off. But if you're really curious what test there is, there is a test by a company called Genova called GI Effect, which is pretty amazing. It can really tell you that population survey of what's living inside your microbiome, but you need a functional medicine provider to order that for you. But I want you to know that it exists. So we talked about dysbiosis. Let's bring to number two. And number two is toxins. Toxins can really mess with your belly. You know that there are certain things that are toxic for your liver. You know there's certain things that are toxic for your kidney. But there's also things that's toxic for your microbiome. There's a lot of things, but I'm going to talk about two things right now. Heavy metals and pesticides. Heavy metals, arsenic and water, mercury and fish, your dental fillings, pesticides on your fruits and on your vegetables. Specifically, one called glyphosate found in Roundup, the weed killer. It's, it's everywhere. And toxins interrupt your biology. They poison the mitochondria. They mess up enzymes. They create inflammation. They create a hormonal imbalance. They create a mess. They create oxidative stress. If you don't know what that is, go on my TikTok channel. I did a whole thing on oxidative stress. It's awesome. So you might say, okay, I'm not exposed to toxins. I would know if I'm exposed to, to toxins. Plus, wouldn't it say on the labels if I'm exposed to toxins? No. There is a limit of how much toxin is allowed in one particular substance. But we're talking about micro doses over years, a little bit on every tomato, a little bit on every apple that you eat, a little bit in the fish that you have, a little bit in the water, and it just builds up over time. No one is measuring the micro doses because they don't count, right? But as they build up in your system, they are messing up your gut, which can cause a mess to everything. So how do you know if you have it and how do you manage it? So here's the thing. If you don't know by now, I wrote a book. It's called It's In Your Head. Um, you could buy it on Amazon. But here's what I say in the book. Here's the cliff notes. The cliff notes is this. There's an order of things. The first thing you have to do when you don't feel well, always, always, always start in conventional medicine, see your PCP, see the specialist involved in whatever body part is bothering you. Then if that's all clear and they tell you it's in your head, that's why you have the book in your hand. The next thing you do is you change your nutrition. If your nutrition is, is on, you know, fixes it, you do, you clean up your nutrition, all your symptoms go away. You feel amazing. You're done. Don't look at toxins. Don't look for toxins. You're done. But if you cleaned up your nutrition, you've done everything right, and you still, still feel symptoms, that's when you start looking, hey, maybe there's some toxins going on. Maybe I've been exposed to something. And that requires a special urine test for um, pesticides and heavy metals. Again, usually can only be ordered by someone who does functional medicine. So it's not something that you can grab off the shelf. But don't run there first. So always start with cleaning up your diet and seeing how you feel. But if you still don't feel well, that's where you need to go. And how do you get rid of it? First of all, you have to, whatever the it is, if it's pesticide, you have to stop taking it, which means eating only organic. If it's certain toxins, you have to find where you're being exposed and removing that from your life. And then sweating it out, whether it's working out or saunas. And then there's certain um, supplements you could take, glutathione, milk thistle. I'm getting ahead of myself, but the point is there is a way to manage it. So this brings us now to the third thing. We talked about dysbiosis, we talked about toxins, and now the third thing is stress. And stress is a big deal. I know we're just kind of, you know, stress, what does that have to do with my belly? Stress is one of the things that's everywhere, right? We're all stressed out. We all experience it. But the issue is how do we deal with it? It's really important. 
It's, it's an important life skill, not just to get us through the day, but by managing it, it actually affects our belly. So do what you have to do, whether it's meditation, yoga, hot and cold plunges, massage, whatever it needs, whatever works for you to get it under control. Why? Because the gut and the brain are connected. And I did a whole talk about gut brain connection um, on YouTube, on a podcast, on TikTok. Make sure you watch it. Here's the cliff notes. Your mood, your anxiety, your depression, your happiness, all of it is controlled by neurotransmitters. Dopamine, serotonin, you may have heard of these words. Neurotransmitters are actually produced in your belly. There's more neurotransmitters in your belly than there is in your brain. So you might think anxiety, depression, mood is all up here, but it's actually right here in your belly. It's a crazy, it's really crazy when you think about it. It's all in your belly. So we have a connection between the stress that we're feeling and what's happening, how we manage it in our belly. Now the microbiome is literally listening to your thoughts. So if you're stressed out, you're under chronic stress. I don't mean like just one thing before a test, but your chronic stress, it changes the bacteria inside your belly to become more toxic. Now you have more of the bad ones, less of the good ones. And that means your gut can't make the neurotransmitters, the serotonin and dopamine that you need to make you feel happy. So you're stressed. You change the bacteria in your body. Now they can produce enough of that happy, feel good neurotransmitters. So now what? You're going to feel worse and more stressed and then rinse, repeat. And you're stuck in this loop. Stress in your brain causes stress in your gut. Stress in your gut will cause stress on your brain. We used to think that people who have irritable bowel syndrome, that's people who have like stomach issues, but there's no real cause for them. For some people, they would say it's in your head. You're just nervous. You're, you're neurotic. You have a nervous belly. But actually what we found out is that that inflammation that they had in their body was causing irritable bowel. That irritable bowel was causing inflammation because of this dysbiosis, which again, messed with the neurotransmitters and caused all of this. So it's not that you're faking it. It's not that it's in your head. It's actually chemically driven. Bottom line, stress will mess up your gut. Gut can mess up your stress and you're just stuck in a loop that we have to break. So as always, I like to recap because I like to recap because we have a GIF about it. And if you don't know by now, just type the word recap on your iPhone and see what happens. My face comes up. You're welcome. You can use it on your next text message. You have to make sure your gut is on point. That's the recap. That's the bottom line. You have to manage a dysbiosis, remove toxins, manage your stress because your gut is your health. It's all one thing. So what do we do? The first thing you need to do is change your food. And of course, it's not a one size fits all. It really depends on where you are and what your goals are. But generally, generally speaking, we have to do three things in our food. Generally speaking, we have to go gluten-free, dairy-free, and remove the refined starches and sugars. If you can do that, you're halfway there, probably more than halfway. You have to get rid of that ASAP. If possible, add some probiotics and prebiotics and polyphenols, which basically is the things that make the food, gives the food colors. Eat the rainbow. That's the bottom line. Avoid antibiotics, avoid antacids, control your, your stress and detox or avoid toxins, reduce and manage your cortisol levels. I know easier said than done. It's a lot. If you can manage this on your own, great. If you want to work with us, amazing. This is how you reach us at the new method on every platform, except for Twitter, because I haven't mastered that one yet. So on every platform, except for Twitter, or you can go on our website, thenewmethod.com, send us a message. We will reach out to you. We look forward to working with you because you always knew there was a better way. I will see you guys next week. Thanks for watching this week's video on the three dangers to your gut. And if you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out last week's video on how to get rid of your food baby. See you soon.